this is going to be a very different kind of video. In 1997, I used to be a scammer. And this is what I used to do. Um, I ordered check creation software. I ordered blank checks and I ordered magnetic ink. And now why did I do this? Because I was desperate. It's very, very desperate. Life wasn't going well, didn't have any money. And I did this in 97. Not proud of it. And I did some credit card scams. My most successful fake check scams got me $50,000 in a week. And you want to know what my big problem was? This is how I set it up. I opened up the checking account that I deposited the checks into through the mail. So I then go into the branch and I used a mail drop. I found a vacant house and I used that mailbox to receive the debit card. And when I would go to the ATMs, pull out the cash, be like that. That's how I did that. So there was no way for it to ever come back on me. Incidentally, I went back to check the house and the mailbox was gone after they discovered what I was doing. I'm just telling you what I had available to me in 1997. 1997. And I did some credit card fraud, which netted me a computer. What I used to do is go to the best part of town why the criminals are coming over here. And I would go through the mail of a very high-end affluent. I would go to a post office and literally drag the trash out and bring the trash home and go through the mail. And I found a pre-approval for um, a credit card and I was able to get that credit card activated and buy computer equipment. This was 1997. So, right now, there is this thing that's going on that's called a Zale scam. Let me say this, and let me say this right now. Stop using that debit card. What these scammers are doing is they're sending you, because right now, I just use my previous unsavory history to show you what I had available in 1997. This is what they have in 19 in 2022. They have software that will allow them to call you from one number. And the number that will ring on your phone will be Bank of America, Chase, it will be uh, Wells Fargo. And you can go to the website and see that number that is ringing your phone is from a prime bank. That is what they have available today. Something else that they have available today. There's a, a banking um, app or system called Plaid, which allows credit card companies, people to access your bank account and see what your deposits are, how you're handling your banking business, right? These criminals have access to a software that does the same thing. So when they call you and it's like, well, your last transaction was such and such on such and such date. So you have the, the number that's your bank's calling you. They can verify your account. They know things that they shouldn't. And one of the reasons, and this is something that I feel that they know is because you're using that debit card. That debit card is the gateway to your bank account. And I feel with this software that they have and your debit card, they're able to get into your account, get your personal information, get your phone number, because everyone that they're hitting, they know that these people have money in the bank. They know. Now, I have not been a victim of any banking scam, and I'm gonna tell you why. And this is something I've been doing for years. Every morning I wake up, I look at my business bank account, I look at my personal bank account, and I look at my credit reports. It takes me about five minutes. Every morning I do that. So why do I do that? 
because like if someone actually figure out a way to come after me the most they can get is five thousand because well three four thousand because personal i can draw with thousand draw one thousand business i can draw up to three thousand dollars cash using my debit cards and once again you want to stop using those debit cards stop using those debit cards because this is how these criminals are getting access to your bank account and your debit card like when you go to a restaurant and you pay with your debit card what does the server do they literally disappear for two or three minutes with your debit card this is how a lot of these uh, rings got busted because they would go to restaurants and they would have a server and say for every debit card that you uh, give us a credit card we'll pay you 50 bucks this chick's like I hit four cards that's 200 bucks a night so they go ahead and they run your your card through the skimmer and then they run it through the credit transaction system so they can do it and you don't even have any clue and the next thing you know you got all these fraudulent charges on your card because once again, I used the experience of what I did when I was a scammer. The things that they have available, like literally, they can clone your debit card or credit card in a matter of seconds and start shopping online and getting stuff. Uh, the Zelle scam and what's going to happen going forward is a lot of banks are they're, they're not going to make people whole because here's the thing. Let's say someone gets one of my credit cards and they go shopping and I call up the bank and it's like, hey, there's all these unauthorized. I did not shop. I wasn't there. The bank will do an investigation and it's like, what we're going to do, Mr. Cameron, is we're going to issue a provisional credit and then we're going to um, send you a new credit card. And that's it. That's it. That's it. Right. So one of the things that you have to understand scams financial scams are already high they're already high right we're already here but we're going to go we're going to go to the ceiling because this is one of the things that's happening during the global reset every day people fall off like let's go back to my scam in history why did I scam I was desperate and one of the things I'm going to say this, it was ridiculously easy to get $50,000 in one week. So because I don't have an addictive personality and I knew it was wrong, I just stopped it and I never did it again. But what's going to happen is if you are a person who makes maybe $30,000 a year and you start scamming and you make 50 K in one week, you ain't going back. This is one of the reasons I would never date a stripper. Once you get exposed to that, you're irrevocably altered. You can't go back. And what we're going to see as the economy continues to keep melting down, every time the economy shifts down, we have more people who, who join the ranks of the demo people, join the ranks of the worthless people, join the ranks of the criminal population. And we, right now, financial scams are booming. And what is, we haven't seen nothing yet. We've not seen anything yet. Nothing yet. Because 2023, I predict we will be in a recession and it's gonna be very economically painful. I reflect back to when I was living in that boarding house and when I was desperate and being desperate made me a dangerous person. And I, I understand that now. I even understood it at that time, which is one of the reasons I stopped scamming, because honestly, I knew that if I kept scamming, I was going to get arrested sooner or later. It's inevitable. And I ain't built for jail. So I stopped. I never got caught. Never, never did it again. Like I said, financial scam, scams are booming. They are at an all time high. And let's say, you know, just for the sake of argument, 500,000 financial scams happen per month. 
right? That's the current level. That's gonna to go to about 5 million financial scams in about a year from now. They're scaling up because once again, based from my sordid past, financial scams can be extremely lucrative if you are set up correctly. Now, if you're a person with good credit, you are a target. You are a target because identity theft and credit card scams are gonna go through the roof. And I'm gonna tell you why. It's extremely lucrative. Um, one of the things that I am doing is I've applied for 10 credit cards recently because uh, I had a very high FICO, 829, and there were no inquiries on my credit report. So everything that I applied for, I got between 30 and $50,000 limits. So I now have about close to $750,000 on personal credit limits. Now, this is the play. I am never going to use a lot of my personal credit because if I can use about 100,000 and my credit score, I can use 150, my credit score is not going to really drop a whole lot because I still have 600,000 available. So the game I'm playing is I'm going to rock out my personal credit. And also here, here's something that you need to understand. You could get to an 820, 850 credit score with about six credit cards, one installment loan and maybe a mortgage. So you don't need 40 because there, there's this thing that happens that's called diminishing returns. So I'm at a point where I can go out and get 100 credit cards. It's not going to now, let's say I got 100 credit cards and let's say I have one point five million dollars worth of credit. I can use two hundred and fifty or three hundred thousand dollars in my credit and my credit score will stay really high because I have an additional one point two available because I'm not maxed out my credit. But credit is going to become super important in the next five years. There's a lot of banks. Uh, one of the credit cards I got is Truist. And Truist, now if you're in the states that they operate, you might want to try Truist because Truist gave me three $30,000 credit cards with a soft pull approval. And I think in five years from now, soft pull approvals are going to be the norm. All right, stop using that debit card. I'm going to keep saying that. Why? Because if you as the consumer know that you can go ahead and look through their offerings and there's not going to be a penalty, AKA a hard pull. And let's talk about that because Truist gave me $90,000 in credit cards with no hard pull. I have no queries on my credit report. And here's the thing. I, my credit score, did not drop from getting 10 new credit cards. It may drop once I get the cards and the cards from start reporting, but I don't think so because th this is the thing. When you have a high score, like let, let's go ahead and talk about, I'm dealing with some, I have a client that did something I told him not to do. He applied for credit. He has a thin credit file and he has a low score. So he applied for some stuff. He lost 15 points because he's a thin file and a low, low score. If you have a thick file, and shout out to the credit plug. He's putting out a lot of information. That's actually where I learned about Truist. <clears throat> um, if you have a thick file and a lot of inquiries, you can still get improved for stuff. So the danger is that low credit score in a very thin file. On a thin file, I would say maybe two accounts, three accounts. Um, ideally, you want to have eight accounts credit cards, car loan, mortgage, installment loans, eight to 15 to have a thicker file. Now my credit file is, cause I got 47, I got 40 cards that are reporting. Uh, my, shoot, maybe 50. Uh, my credit file is very, very thick and it has age. It's very thick. So even with me going out and getting 10 credit cards, I don't think my score is going to plummet. I don't think it's going to move at all. And honestly, because uh, when I applied for this stuff, I didn't have any inquiries and I had a high score and my utilization is 0.5%. And 
It says 1% because it, it can't do it can't do fractions. So I'm in a really good situation. But going forward, I think a lot of banks, including American Express, Wells Fargo, Chase, are going to start doing soft pull approvals. Like Capital One, if you get a Capital One product, any product, they hit all three of your credit reviews. So they're, they're one that's interesting. Like I think for bad credit, they have a soft pull pre-qualifying. And I think you have to go ahead and get it to get the hard pull, I'm not sure. But if you have good credit, you will be a target. You will be a target. They will be coming after you because these identity scams, these credit card scams, they're, they're literally rings. And I, I just, you know, and I told you what I was able to do in 1997. They got the dark web, which didn't exist in 1997. They have all these tools. They have all these communities. So, yeah, there are scamming communities. There are people who get together and talk about scams. There are Facebook groups about scams. And these people are putting the power of collective information together to harm you. Because uh, once again, every morning I get up, I look at my business bank account, I look at my personal bank accounts, I look at my credit. And once again, get credit monitoring. I use my FICO, which is some people would say expensive. I think it's 39 bucks a month. I really don't care because you want to be on top of your money. So if something happens, you want to know when it happens so you can start being proactive. Because all these people who are getting taken by these Zelle scams, they're not on top of their money. They don't know how much money they have in the account because if just a simple look like, okay, I supposedly transfer, because it, it tells you in your account ledger Every transaction, whether it's deposit, whether it's withdrawal, whether it's an ACH, it tells you exactly what it is in your bank when it happens. So a lot of these people, I feel, are financially illiterate and they don't understand how banking works. And this is one of the reasons they get scammed because once again, these guys are really good. That, that cloning of the number well, they can call you from one number and have Bank of America, Chase, or Wells Fargo number pop up on your caller ID. It's pretty convincing, but if you would just look in your bank account and see that your money has not moved, then you would know that you're being scammed. You would know that you're being scammed. But once again, um, like this credit repair, let me, let me just say this. If you have bad credit, you need to work on that. You need to fix that in five years. Cause you know, everyone's talking about FICO 10, FICO 10. Most banks are not using FICO 10. Um, they're using FICO nine. Cause the, one of the like truest, their, their stuff is so slick. Um, one of the things that you have to understand and acknowledge is that, um, one of the things that is gonna happen with credit, like most banks are using FICO 8 or FICO 9. They're not using FICO 10. You wanna know why? When you go at 10 o'clock at night and go on American Express and apply for a credit card, that is done by a robot. There, there's no one doing that. So what they have to do is adjust these robots with the new algorithms, which for a Bank of America, for an American Express, for Chase, that can be really expensive. That's one of the reasons that they haven't jumped all over FICO 10 and they're gonna implement it slowly because there's an expense to the implementation of FICO 10. There's a big expense and that's one of the reasons. So you got time because when FICO 10 hits and banks adopt it and start using it, if you've got bad credit, you will be screwed for two years. This is one of the things, like right now, what you wanna do is fix your credit, get these primary trade lines because like authorized users, you know, this happened the other night and it was pretty strange, it was on a date. And we were talking about credit and stuff and she said her credit score was 600 and she asked me to put her on one of my credit cards. Fair 
fairly astute, fairly astute. I, I wasn't offended because, you know, she says, I don't need the credit card because I, I know how this works. But here's the thing. Authorized users are not working the way that they used to. Um, years ago, I put my daughter on my Priceline account, which I closed out. And within a month, she had a score of 710. And then went to Bank of, uh, went to Chase and American Express, and she got two cards. Started her credit journey. But typically, if you put someone on as an authorized user on your credit accounts, and they don't live at the same address, this could be a problem. This could be a problem because uh, I got someone I'm working with who had very few primaries and a bunch of authorized users. He had family members he had convinced to put him on his accounts. And you know, he came to me, well, we, we, he, he, well, I put out an offer. And once I looked at his credit report, I said, you have no primaries. This is why you keep getting turned out. He set his credit score is 750, but he has no primaries. Cause once again, remember what I said about how they have to go in and adjust the robots. When you do an automated credit app, it's scanning your credit report for primaries. And if it sees a bunch of authorized users, denied, because that's not your credit. Now, I feel authorized user accounts will work for a father, a mother, putting their child on, and they live at the same address. That still is powerful, and that still will work. But just going out and getting a bunch of authorized user accounts, and also, Getting authorized user accounts when you still have a lot of derogatory items in your credit report ain't gonna do nothing for you. You might see a 15 point boost. That's about it. But once again, when you do these credit apps, they're gonna be scanning and looking at your credit reports. And this is very sophisticated automation. These banks spend millions on this automation. This isn't like something hacked together by some developers in Pakistan. This is, these things are coded and they're proprietarily coded to that bank and its applications and things they wanna do. It's very, very sophisticated. And this is why the banks haven't all moved to FICO 10 because they have to go in and readjust the automation and readjust the robots for this. And in time they will, but they're in and out of hurry because they don't want to spend that money. But once again, if you have bad credit, you need to start working on your credit. And I will tell you, specifically written letters work better than the letter templates online, work way better. Because uh, my first round of disputes, I used some stuff I found online, it didn't really work that well. And then I sat down and created my own letters, worked way better, worked much better, worked much better. So you want to write your own letters and you want to key in that first paragraph should be about what's wrong, what you want done, what you want to accomplish. But man, what is going to happen going forward? Because five years from now, I am seeing massive flux and massive change because there are so many people who are falling into the danger zone. Every time the global reset shifts, because uh, there was a video, you will own nothing and you will be happy. Um, ownership is very important, but ownership comes with high maintenance. Like me in the car rental business, I own 31 cars. I gotta look at the insurance, I gotta get them fixed. I, there's a lot to be done with that. There's, you just can't own them and be frictionless. There's a lot of friction with owning stuff. And one of the things that I see is you have got to actually become financially literate and you've gotta get on top of your money because I, I kinda understand that the scammers really put on a convincing con job. But knowing what I know, if these people were financially astute and understood how banking worked, they never would have been scammed. And what these scammers are doing are preying on people's ignorance 
and they're putting on a very, very good dog and pony show. But once again, stop using that debit card because that debit card, I feel this is how they're getting in your account. And instead of going out and cloning your card and using it, they're going for the cash. Every, every one of these people that got targeted, the scammers knew they had a lot of cash. How was the scammer doing? These folks I feel were targeted. I feel that all the banks had a, a data breach and then they used the software to pinpoint accounts because once again, I'm gonna tell you something. What I had available in 1997 compared to what they have to, available today for scamming is like me having some, me, me scraping rocks to start fire. <laughs> That's how primitive it was. What I had in 1997 was pretty much like slapping rocks together to start fire compared to what they have today. I mean, a scammer with his laptop can get millions if he knows what to do. Millions. But once again, and reminiscence of Omni and the Hellcat. Um, when you do this stuff, eventually you're going to get caught because one of the things is it's addictive. Like, man, when I had that 50,000, I was like, man, you a G. My biggest problem was I just couldn't get the money because for me to go out and get a larger check, I would have to go to the bank and write a check to myself and cash it at the window, which means that I would have been on camera. Couldn't do that. Couldn't do that. I was like, that ain't gonna work. And uh, I was pulling money out that account. I pulled five, 3,500, seven, it took me a month to pull out $14,000. Took me a month. And this is one of the reasons I gave the money back because it was a slate, it was a slope. Like once again, I'm going up to the ATM and I would go to the ATM in the middle of the night. I wouldn't go during regular hours. I would always go like two, three o'clock in the morning. And that actually got kind of old because it was just like 500 at a time, 500 at a time, 500 at a time. And you know, if I could have had a proxy found someone but then once you and this is this once you start adding layers to the scam this is every layer that you add to your scam increases your chances of getting caught so I did this hundred percent by myself this is why I never got caught because of the, all the safeguards I put in and I remember going back and that mailbox was gone <laughs> that mailbox was gone they had, they had taken the mailbox down I was like okay that was interesting but and yeah, guys, you really, really need to look out because um, you need to monitor your bank accounts. You need to monitor your credit like a hawk. Um, going forward, this would be a daily requirement, especially if you're a person with some money. You got a business owner and you're making money. You will become a target. They will target you because you got money. So be really like with my checking accounts, the way I have it set up, I got several checking accounts and the checking account that I keep the money in isn't an account. Well, once again, I'm very careful who I write checks to. I'm really careful. Like I just not would write a check because when you present someone with a check, you give them the round number and you give them the account number. And from my scamming days, I know how dangerous that can be. So I typically don't write that many checks per month. I write a check for my office rent and here I pay that with a credit card. Get that cash back, baby. Cause one of the things is I got rid of my American Express and cause I'm not traveling and I'm just a cash back baby right now. I'm just on that cash back tip. That's, that's my reward because uh, when I was buying cars, I used those credit cards to buy cars. In a few months, I was getting three and six thousand dollars a month back in cash back. So when you have extraordinarily high spend, and at that time I had really high spend, the cash back can be significant because my cash back for about six months was the average person's salary, which is pretty significant. But man, 
guys, stop using that debit card. Only use the debit card, because this is my debit card usage. I go to the bank, because I will never use an ATM in a convenience store. Or I would only use the proprietary uh, ATM of the bank that I do business with. I would literally drive to one of their branches, put my card in and pull cash out or use my debit card for banking transactions. I will never ever, I've never used any of my banking card, my, my debit cards to shop. That is just risky. That's ridiculously risky because once you know what can happen, once you use that debit card, once you, and this is why I'm doing this, it's a public service announcement to let you know, because as we move into, as the economy continues to move down, because last month unemployment ticked up, I feel this month unemployment is going to tick up some more. And as we move towards 2023, these financial crimes are going to get stupid. They're going to be ridiculous. And this is one of the reasons every morning, business bank account, personal bank account, credit reports. Every morning, that's my routine. What's going on, guys? Once again, this is going to be a kind of a different video because I'm going to warn you of the number of financial scams that are literally exploding. One very um, pervasive financial scam that is going on is with the Zelle app. And that's just one of the scams. So I'm going to tell you how to protect yourself and listen to me and listen to me now. Stop using your debit card. Stop it. <laughs> Let me tell you what these scammers can do. They can read your debit card and use the same technology that Plaid, which is not a scam site, Plaid is a banking app that allows creditors or people who want to look at your banking activity to read your account balances. They can tell how much money you put in, what your average daily balance it is. The scammers have gotten hold of this technology, so when you use your debit card, and this is how it goes, because I was watching a lot of this stuff this, this morning, and it was really sad, because I'm gonna tell you why these people got in trouble. You would get a fake text, because see, once they read your, your, your debit card, and they get into your banking information, they have your cell phone number, they have your address, they have all of the information that they need to confirm that they are Chase Bank, because essentially what they do is they use a cloning site or a cloning app to, when your phone rings, it will say Bank of America, Chase of America, right? It, and it will say the same number that if you go on the website that it is Chase or Bank of America or Wells Fargo is calling you. This is the power of technology. So it will ring on your phone as if Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase is calling you and then they will confirm exactly to the penny what's going on in your banking account. And then here's the thing why these people get scammed. They're not on top of their money because I have not ever, like I try to sell stuff online. That's when the, that's when the scammers come for me. But I personally do not use my debit cards for anything other than pulling cash out of the court, like I will drive. I will not use one of these ATMs in a convenience store. That once again, that's another way you can get scammed. So I will drive to a Wells Fargo. I will drive to a Chase. I will drive to whatever bank I need to, and I will pull money out of their native ATM. And I've not been scammed because I don't use my debit card. Stop using your debit card. Every time you use your debit card, you expose your bank account to substantial risk. And these financial scams are literally exploding. And you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, this one woman, uh, the scammer got her for $23,000. Now here's the thing. And this is how, this is how the scam goes. 
they send you a text saying, hey, did you authorize the transfer of X amount of dollars? Now, if you were financially astute, you would go straight to your bank account and you would see there has not been any withdrawal from your bank account. That's the first thing. And this is why a lot of these banks don't want to give these people their money back because they were ignorant. They got scammed, but because they didn't have the proper uh, monetary policies put in place. Like, you know, my routine is, this is what I do virtually every morning. I will look at my business bank account. I will look at my personal bank account. And recently I've started to look at my credit reports. Every morning takes me about five minutes. I look at my credit reports. I look at my FICO score every morning, at least five days a week, sometimes seven, because if anything funky happens, I will know immediately. And also 